let's see, I, Paul, I don't think you, I don't know if you mentioned part of the reason that Kevin is here uh, as the CEO of the Investigative News Network is on Monday and Tuesday this week, he's our first professional in residence. So he will be running around the, uh, the J School, speaking to classes, and uh, giving a, a lunch uh, at noon on uh, Monday. And um, I assume Paul will be okay to invite folks to that. Yeah. So we're really looking forward to that. And so we're going to try to throw this together in a relatively short time. And uh, try to get a mix, a mix of people to talk about this, this issue. Uh, Kevin pointed out this article uh, last night, and uh, the LA Times just has a great, a great piece <coughs> on um, what's going on with investigative journalism. It mentions uh, Robert's out outfit, mentions INN, and um, I, I put the, uh, the print-only version up on the screen because you, uh, on the LA Times site it doesn't go, doesn't go across to a really, really good article about uh, describing sort of the situation as it is today. Um, so the plan today was, uh, hopefully everybody has an agenda. If not, there's some right over there. And the idea really is to um, have some very short, present, short presentations and ideally uh, leave plenty of time for discussion and brainstorming. Um, so we've got some, some folks in, in the room for example, Frank Moyes from the uh, Deming Entrepreneurial uh, Deming Center for Entrepreneurship here on campus. Uh, let's see, I think Mike, T Mike Higgins is a uh, uh, longtime uh, media media consultant and uh, fellow CSU graduate. And um, so, some different perspectives in the room, and uh, hopefully, we can we can address this with, with, you know, with this mix of mix of perspectives. So, well, let's see. Uh, We'll get the live stream going pretty quickly, so um, I guess we probably should just go ahead. Go ahead and start. I'm still recording this, so it'll it'll still be on. So um, uh, Kevin is CEO, the founding CEO of Investigative News Network, which is what currently 51 members. <coughs> yeah, we're just about to announce another three. So three, three about 52 to 53. Fantastic. So we're really, really <coughs> thrilled to have him here on, on campus. And Kevin, I guess you just maybe talk for a, a few minutes, yeah. and then we go go into the first presentation. Fantastic. Well, first and foremost, thank you all for giving up your Saturday to uh, to be here. Uh, I think this is a, a very exciting opportunity for us. I really, really want to thank uh, Paul and Steve and the university for hosting this. I think this is uh, this is really terrific, and uh, I'm especially encouraged by the mix of folks in the room. We have academics. We have people involved in, in investigative journalism and, and, and entrepreneurs and the like. Uh, I think it's going to be a very interesting uh, program. Um, what I wanted to do is to just kick things off by setting the table a little bit uh, and talk a little bit about how I see uh, the climate. Um, give you a little bit of background on myself. I, I started uh, as the CEO of the Investigative News Network way back when in June of 2010. Um, it feels like at least eight years, but it's actually been close to eight months. Uh, it has been an extraordinary uh, first few months, I think. Uh, the, uh, for those of you who don't know, Investigative News Network was first conceived and I think uh, came together at a conference in Pocantico, New York, back in July of 2009, uh, of which folks like Rosie Rosenthal and, and Brad Houston and Bill Busenberg and, and others, uh, I think it was 20, Rosie? 28. 28, got together and, and decided that this new model, this, this non-profit uh, model um, deserved uh, focus and frankly needed an organization that was going to really aid and abet it in every conceivable way possible. And that's how I named was formed. Um, there, are, you know, as you can tell, there's a lot of uh, interest from all sides, academics and, and for-profit news about this model. Um, some folks are calling this uh, yet another aberration of, of, of journalism. Others are seeing this as being the future of journalism in some way. I, I, I tend to subscribe to the latter. Um, I believe that, uh, and I'm going to paraphrase here, you know, uh, folks like Clay Shirky who are talking about really sort of three prongs to the future of journalism. Um, obviously for profit, um, clearly um, consumer and, and uh, public um, journalism, whatever you want to call it. 
is, is definitely coming of age. And then there's the nonprofit model and, and, and what it can do, uh, particularly as it relates to um, fostering long form journalism in the public interest and the notion of accountability and, and the notion of ROI um, from, from a civic point of view, not just a monetary point of view, is absolutely critical. So let's talk a little bit, very briefly, without going into too much detail uh, with, with numbers here, uh, about the state of play right now. So um, INN, thankfully, has the support of some fantastic foundations, um, the Knight Foundation, McCormick, Ethics and Excellence, others, I, I know I'm leaving others off uh, uh, right now, but um, these national organizations have stepped up to support not just INN, but a good deal of our members too. However, uh, these folks will be the first to tell you that they are in no position to sustain that level of support for any significant period of time. Um, as I consider, you know, the chess clock has started. And, and what we are talking about today, and what I really hope to get into today, beyond the, oh, we need to reach sustainability, what I really want to get into today is, let's get into the meat and potatoes. What are some of the models out there? What are people doing? What should we be doing? How does that look from a philanthropic, philanthropic excuse me, standpoint? What does that look like from an economic standpoint? What are some of those revenue streams? And we hope this is the first of many conversations that INN will foster and others that will get beyond the, we need to get to sustainability conversation to, and here's how we're going to do it. Because I think if we were all going to be honest with ourselves, it isn't clear. But what is clear, and I think this is extremely encouraging, is that there are a multitude, multitude, there are many, several, <laughs> there, are, there are several revenue streams that look like that they are going to be promising. <clears throat> um, and from our perspective, Investigative News Network, we are, I think, a, a forward-thinking organization, not a reactive organization. What I mean by that is, I see a, a big part of our role is to help lead the way and to help define these revenue streams. And so what I'm hoping to get out of this is intelligence and, and also share this, because I'm hoping that all our members will have the chance to watch this stream, whether live or can, and, and take something from it. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about that revenue matrix, as I see it. So um, philanthropy, it clearly will have a, um, a, a long time role. And right now, in, in talk, and I, and I won't steal any thunder from, from Rosie's or, or Laura's conversation later, but the, the revenue mix today is very, very much foundation supported. So giving comes in multiple forms, and I think we, you know, we talked about the national foundations. Clearly an area of growth for, for INN's members is going to be localized philanthropy. And, and how, do we, how, how does one activate a community that is seeing the civic responsibility of journalism being <coughs> eroded? Um, and, and what are people going to do about it? Right? And the notion of local dollars staying locally to have local effect, I think is extremely appealing to a, a number of, of communities. And we're very encouraged by that. So that's one thing. The other thing we have to do, and this is a longer term goal, and frankly, a hard uh, situation, is we have to find ways to help consumers of our content understand why what we do is important and how they can support us directly. Um, so that's, that's another aspect. And by the way, that isn't necessarily just, hey, if you like this content, donate now. Um, for many respects, this also plays into models like the application economy, right? What kind of apps can we generate? What kind of, of, of tool sets can we provide to consumers that they find to be valuable uh, to their everyday uh, areas of concern? There are other revenue streams that we're going to touch upon, I hope, um, which include everything from events, and training. Um, there are some you know, corporate sponsorships. Certainly we have some folks involved in advertising. Um, there are actually amazing innovations going on. We have crowdfunding of stories through some of our members. Um, so again, what I'm hoping to, to, to come out of this conference today, the symposium today, would be a little more, bit more detail into those areas. So again, just to set the table, I know we're probably, I don't know, actually not going to do that at the time. <clears throat> kind of a speed talker here. Um, so that's what I want to get out of it. I hope you all get out of something out of it too. And I hope that um, we can all follow along for those of you at home. The hashtag again is, excuse me, is 
I <coughs> use Biz. Um, B-I-Z. B-I-Z. My Twitter uh, handle, if you want to uh, send me direct messages that I can bring up to the group, is KLJ Davis. And, and I do hope that we actually have a, as much of a conversation happening online as we do here in the room. So again, I want to thank, uh, thank very, very much the, uh, the, uh, the folks here at Boulder for hosting this. And uh, I look forward to a very informative day. All right. Thanks. Wow, and we actually are ahead of time, so we'll be three minutes. So um, if anybody wants to ask uh, a quick question. Great. Put the, the CEO on. Any, anything to add? Any, anything that we would like to? Say? Yeah, i got a question. Sure. You talked about yeah. that um, the philanthropy is going to be local philanthropist, but you mentioned Knight McCormick. Yeah. So do you guys have local philanthropic support now in Colorado? Colorado being the local that I'm referring to. Right. Um, well, so Investigative News Network is the national, soon to be international organization. That, so, so one thing that we're trying to do is work with those folks like, like Laura Frank and, and, and Rocky Mountain um, and Alan and his uh, operation to activate local philanthropy. Okay. So uh, the, the fact is that we do have members such as Voice of San Diego and others um, that have done a decent job of, of working with local foundations and, and, and activating local uh, philanthropists uh, on, on that length and yeah. we'll talk a little bit about it. Um, Ed News Colorado is funded almost, I, well, pretty much exclusively in terms of foundation funding by local Colorado foundations. Mm -hmm. We don't have any national foundation supporting us right now. But we seem to be able to continue to convince them that ongoing funding of us makes sense from the sort of civic ROI point of view. I love that way of framing it, so I wrote it down and I'm going to use it when I have meetings with foundations next week. So <laughs> He's about you already delivered. There you go. And I use as a mix of local and so this actually brings up a point about how I'd like to see today work, and Steve, if you don't mind. Um, how many of you have been to a place where you, people touch upon great th things and then the conversation goes by you, okay? So let's not wait till the end of people's, let's, let's not be polite, right? Let's be aggressive, let's actually throw things out and let's see what we can do to make this conversation engaging. If we don't get through everyone's presentations, I think it's fine, but what I really want this to be today is, is, a, is a real give and take. And, and let's, let's, let's be honest about some of the challenges that we face because I think too often we tend to glaze over some of the, 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 the bigger issues. That was a good question. Any other questions before I leave the stage? Good, well, there it is. So we'll go on to the next thing.